Paul rolled on what he makes of the comings and goings here on what seems to be a parade of p potential contenders. You know, uh, Carl, it is possible, possible that Chris Christie, Newt Gingrich, and Rudy Giuliani don't get jobs, or for that matter, the jobs they want, and it would raise the distinct possibility that loyalty, even early loyalty, will only get you so far. Again, I stress, too early to tell, but what do you make of that? Well, it is too early to tell. I mean, uh, one of the three names that you mentioned has taken himself out of running for a cabinet post. Newt is Gingrich that because, says he but is not. that because he, he, it was looking like he wouldn't get one that he wanted? Well, I, maybe, but I think it was more because he's got a job that he'd like to have, uh, which uh, he's been talking about for a number of weeks, which is sort of a White House staff position that would give him carte blanche to go in, review every agency, and uh, make recommendations for re how to reform those agencies' operations. I I'm, I'm not certain that, that that's necessarily something that cabinet members would be willing to to tolerate. I mean, it basically give him carte blanche to go in to every department in the government and sort of tell them how to do their business. And my suspicion is a lot of these uh, cabinet secretaries will want to, you know, sort of take that job on themselves. How do we, you yeah. know, the new VA secretary, how can I reform the VA? I'm the Commerce Secretary, how can I reform the Commerce Department? But, um, but look, th this is a, it's, it's a very odd time because, yes, you want to reward the people who were with you early. Uh, and helped you a lot, and at the same time, you want to have a government that is broadly representative of the country. I think it has been an exceptional uh, step by uh, President-elect Trump to be so magnanimous and, you know, invites Mitt Romney. He's got Rick Perry coming today. It's also a sign that he's going for excellence when he's reaching out to people like uh, General Mathis and, and others. So uh, talking about Jamie Dimon for Treasury Secretary, who would have thunk that? And yeah. all of those, all of that is giving off, I think, good vibes uh, on his uh, on his part. And and look, we'll, we're we're about ready to start to see. My suspicion is next week and the week after, uh, he'll start rolling out uh, some some more cha some more additions to his cabinet and, and his staff. Uh, we're supposed to see the economic and domestic policy teams here relatively quickly. Uh, but uh, he's, he's off to a fast start and I think setting a good tone. Some have looked at it as a demeaning process. You know, the cattle call, it's like a uh, you know, celebrity apprentice. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Well, there is, there is some of that and it could be seen that way. On the other hand, people are gratified to have had their names mentioned even if they don't get the final post. And, uh, you know, the transition that I was involved in in 2000 was abbreviated because of the conflict over Florida and we attempted to downplay who it was that we were looking at. That was just the style of, of Governor, uh, Governor Bush, President-elect George W. Bush. Uh, Donald Trump obviously has a different style. So far, I, look, I think it's been helpful. You look at yesterday. Michelle Reed, the, edge of the Democrat uh, education chief for the District of Columbia. Her husband is Kevin Johnson, the Democrat mayor of Sacramento, California. There they were talking with Donald Trump about education reform. So was Betsy DeVos, the former Republican state chairman in Michigan and a devoted and ferocious advocate for school choice. She and her family have been involved in this crusade for decades right. and had done marvelous work all across the country. Look, I don't know who ends up being the Secretary of Education, but that would both signal to the country uh, Trump's openness and his emphasis on quality and his direction for that department. You know, Carl, this, I don't want to just dump this on you, but we're getting news of uh, the president-elect meeting with all the major uh, network executives and some key talent. Well, that would include CNN and Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, to sort of set the record straight on coverage and press availability and all of that. What do you make of that and that there will all be trumping off to Trump Tower to state their mind and I guess he his? Yeah. Look, I think this is important. Now, my understanding is this is at the urging of Kellyanne Conway. Right. I think this is important. The president-elect does not have a good relationship with the press. Uh, didn't during the campaign. He has every reason to be upset with the coverage, particularly by some print organs like the New York Times. But he will be the president, and the press will cover him, and he needs to accept it and deal with it. And, uh, frankly, I, this is one of the two things that I, I, I think we're... Uh, there, there, there's some work to be done, and I hope that they have an airing of their differences. I think uh, the president, uh, you know, ought to make it clear what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. They should make it clear what they feel as representatives of the 
of, of the media that, that they think is necessary for the American people to have fair and open coverage of them. And, and look, let's find a balance, let's find an agreement and move forward. The other thing is I hope he stops tweeting at the members of the press. I was just going to ask name, you. I'm literally just going to ask you that. You know, name, should he name, stop? Name a White yeah, name a White House communications director and let that person, you know, uh, tweet on uh, on his behalf. It is it is unseemly. The president is punching down. He's the president of the United States. Here's the cast of Hamilton. He's the president of the United States. Here's the New York Times. He had to just stop punching down at all these people. I don't think he people. can do it. I don't think it's in his DNA. I, I to stop. hope he. I hope he does. I hope he does. Let somebody else express his thoughts on his behalf. Make it one step removed. And and, and because look, he's done a marvelous job in so many respects since Absolutely. the election. And not too much. Not too many days ago. The look at the polls showing a dramatic increase in his favorability rate, highest it's ever been. He desperately needs that to get, continue to get better. And it, in my opinion, he, he may thrill the hearts of the true believers, but in terms of uniting the nation and putting himself in the position he needs to have success next year, I don't think it helps him that much. My own prediction, and you're far smarter than I, Carl, is that he's going to continue this, and it's a way of bypassing the press with whom he has, as you said, a very tense relationship anyway. I don't know if it's that easy for him to stop it. Well, look, I'm not adverse to him continuing to do some tweeting, right. uh, because you're right. It allows him to speak directly to the American people. I'm just saying, speak directly to the American people about what you are doing and what you want to do. Don't be using it to try and settle scores with, you know, I mean, the Hamilton thing. Look, I wrote about it. I was, I was appalled by, the, yeah. by what the Hamilton, both the audience booing the, the, the vice president-elect and then lecturing in a condescending uh, fashion uh, the, 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 uh, the let others do uh, it. Vice let others elect. do it. But let others do that. Let others do that. States. That's right. I got That's you. right. Thank you, my friend. Best-selling author and a darn good one. Very good political thinker, Carl Rowe. Thank you.